What is up guys, Tilly Mikkel here of Social Vineyards. Welcome back to another wine video. This is episode 41 of the Tasting with Julian series, the series where we taste together some specific wines from specific wine producers and we learn together and share uh, the passion that we have for wine looking at some specific items. So today I am particularly excited and somewhat intrigued of tasting a series of four wines that are made in the Languedoc area in the south of France but they are made with grape varieties that are more normally and that originate from the Loire Valley so much further north and much further towards the Atlantic Ocean. So we are going to be tasting, I am going to be tasting wines made by the Maison Van Ventenac, which is a respected producer that is located in the area of Cabardès. So Cabardès is not a very famous appellation on the global scale. It is located near the medieval, very famous medieval city of Carcassonne. So we are inland of the Languedoc area. So Languedoc is mainly along the coast, but the Cabardès is rather inland uh, compared to the rest of the Languedoc and it is right in between the influences of the Atlantic Ocean on the west and the Mediterranean climate. So much in between these two influences that this area is one of the only areas in France and pretty much in the whole world that is able to grow successfully both grape varieties that are more typically found on the Atlantic coast of France in the Bordeaux area, namely the Cabernet Sauvignons and the Merlots, as well as the grape varieties that are typical of the coast of France, the Grenaches, the Syrahs, the Carignans and the Mourved. So this area has you know, all the goodness of uh, influences from the Atlantic and influences from the Mediterranean. But they've gone with these series of wines a different direction and they've chosen to go even outside the, the box, thinking outside the box and growing some uh, Cabernet Franc and Chenin Blanc, so grape varieties that are normally found in much northern uh, latitudes. So with this series uh, Maison Vantenac, which by the way is a producer that is very uh, aware and very careful with uh, respecting the environment, they are at this point converting all their vineyards into organic farming. So you have to know that to convert a vineyard and become certified organic, it takes, I believe, three years of organic farming practices before you get actually certified. That's exactly where these wines are. They are made from organically grown uh, grapes, but they are not uh, certified organic quite yet. So with this specific series as well, they have been very careful of not using much oak. So when they are using oak, and uh, we are going to be talking with these, each of these specific cuvées when they have been using oak, but when they're using oak, they're using large vessels, 2000 liter vats, so not giving a lot of influences. One of these wines is also aged in uh, clay jars so very much in this movement of uh, you know more wines that are more respectful of the environment and also wines that are more respectful of the characteristics of the grapes that they are made from so with these wines they have selected some specific blocks in their estate in their vineyards that are particularly interesting and as i was saying made from Cabernet Franc and Chenin Blanc. So first I am going to be tasting uh, what is called the Candide uh, Cuvée which is 100% uh, Chenin Blanc uh, wine uh, that is not uh, fermented or aged in any oak. Straight away it is very very bright and it is also very characteristic of the Chenin Blanc uh, grape varieties. Clearly they are these honey slightly elderflower, very floral notes together with the notes of uh, apricot that are very uh, characteristics of uh, Chenin Blanc, a tiny bit of tropical elements as well. Overall very floral, there is a touch of brioche so this wine must have been worked on its leaves because the leaves release some of brioche buttery characteristics uh, into the wine when the wine is aged and uh, stirred on its leaves for quite a while. Touches of lemon, it smells already very fresh and vibrant and inviting. You can already tell just sniffing at this wine that this is going to be a crisp and interesting wine. But let's dig further into it purity of the fruit expression, lots of floral characteristics, a bit of 
white flowers and yellow flowers, a bit of daisy flowers characteristics uh, in there. Daisy, I think, is a very good descriptor, together with some white peach and light apricot tones. So soft, mild and easy to drink, easy to enjoy a wine to be enjoyed with gastronomic dishes, seafood dishes, delicate entrees. A stunner of a wine from the minerality that it translates, that it conveys uh, through the tasting. But let's get into the red wines with a cuvee that is called uh, Lentru. Lentru is French translation, well, translate uh, in English into the odd one. And they'd be willing to indicate here that it is rather, well, this is an odd wine in the Languedoc because it is made from Cabernet Franc uh, in Languedoc. So a bit of a wink uh, to the, the project that they've had here. Uh, this wine is aged in uh, concrete uh, tanks for just a few months. So here I believe the intention is to express the absolute typicity and the absolute expression of the grapes the wine has been made from. It's definitely super fresh and zingy, lots of vibrant sour cherry characteristics together with a bit of raspberry and the freshly squeezed blueberry. So you have the impression that you're smelling at a very fresh red berry juice. There's an explosion of raspberry, blueberry flavors on the palate. This is meat bodied with solid acidity, but it feels very fresh, a little bit saline. Uh, on the finish, it's a slight, quite acidic, but a um, soft, a mild acidity. So this is for a wine for people that like a bit of acidity in their wine, but not an aggressive one whatsoever. So very much so like a blueberry juice. You get these delicate, bitter tannins on the sides, extremely fragrant, vibrant, fresh. And one of the other characteristics of these wines that, are, you know, that is very important that I forgot to mention is that all those wines are made with the minimal amount of sulfur, of sulfites in uh, the winemaking process. They have not used any sulfites during or prior fermentation, which is rather rare. Normally you use a bit of sulfite straight away into the grapes before you even start fermenting the grapes because that's kind of the uh, stage in the winemaking process where the wine is the most exposed to oxygen because there's nothing to protect it. So more work for the winemaker. It's harder to make a wine without sulfites but the result um, generally speaking comes through as more vibrant fruit characteristics because the sulfites somewhat mess around, mess up a little bit some of the fresh uh, expression and vibrant expression of uh, the grapes. And that's typically a successful example of this sort of winemaking. But let's dig into <coughs> what is now the patient's uh, cuvee. So we are still with a 100% uh, Cabernet Franc here. I would assume if you were to find those in the US, this would retail around $15 to $20 and we would be more around the $30 mark on this one. So I expect this is a, a vineyard that yields a little bit less with more concentrated uh, grapes and a bit higher quality as well. They've aged this wine into oak vats. Well, this one was in conquering vats. So they've pushed the maturation of the wine a little bit further, a little bit more expensive to make because it's in oak vat um, as well. But no, uh, I don't expect any intrusion from the oak because it's this is in a 2000 liter oak vat. So no toasting to the wood, no influence of the wood in principle, just a little bit of slow oxyge oxygenation during the maturation process. That's what oak vats are useful for. Certainly we are here with riper fruit expression while we were on the raspberries and the blueberries on the entry on the other one we are here with riper richer red berry expression still berries but more like the fresh blackberries the dark cherries so patience <clears throat> and I love the name of this cuvee by the way patience somewhat has the same vibrancy of expression you can sense the fruit expression on your palate. It feels like you are tasting, and I had this impression with the previous one as well, you are tasting the freshly squeezed 
well, grape berries, and that's fantastic, and it's actually a rare sensation to have. It's got full bodied, it's round, it's soft, it's got a long, long layers of on the finish, loads of clove, loads of um, touches. Yeah, I can sense some touches of what reminds me a bit of vanilla. Maybe it's the chocolatey element to it. So a very yummy, salivating wine overall. I mean, you know, it's not a huge body, but there are so much typicity, so much character into this wine that it cranks up a couple of points above the 90 out of 100 and extraordinarily delicious, savory, salivating, fruity, mineral uh, Cabernet Franc wine. I'm a big fan of Cabernet Franc and this is a fantastic example if you want to taste raw, well, raw but refined expression of Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Cabernet Franc, did I say Cabernet Sauvignon? Cabernet Franc too, so fantastic, fantastic example. But let's finish off by tasting Paul's Cuvée, so another vineyard selection of uh, Cabernet Franc from Maison Vantenac, different selection. Uh, this wine has been aged, half of it has been aged in oak vats, just like Paul, uh, Patience, uh, but the other half, and this is very specific, has been aged, half of the wine has been aged in 150 liter jars. So those are fairly large uh, clay jars, and which is in this trend of uh, aging, maturing wines in amphorae and other clay containers, the clay, allows the wine to breathe in a, a container that allows some oxygen to get in but without any oak influence so again respecting the integrity the purity of the fruit expression wow so just at smelling this wine you can tell i can tell that we are here with the wine with a much more introvert expression but also a much much deeper expression uh, to the aromas and often it's often the case and it's a mark of the greater wines when they are young the expression on the nose is not necessarily as extrovert and as expressive because the great wines are more concentrated they have more tannins they have more balanced and they keep a lot more of their aromas for themselves while they're young and then they age and they open up and the bouquet their expression develops but with age hmm. 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 so yeah paul to me takes it again another level up maybe the grapes are a little bit riper there is a little bit less acidic tension in there so if you are more after the vibrant fruit character with big concentration maybe the patience is a little bit more for you but if you like riper richer blackberry dark cherry expression well the poles is a little bit uh, more like this it feels richer fuller bodied a little bit of a warmer expression but it also has much more tannic uh, concentration as well so we are here a little bit more towards the bordeaux style of uh, cabernet franc expression because yes cabernet franc is grown in bordeaux especially around the saint emilion uh, area or at least on the right bank and specifically specifically in the saint emilion so some of the best cabernet franc wines in the world are made in saint emilion namely the cheval blancs and chateau ozon uh, in particular and some others but we are here more with the bordeaux expression slightly more bordeaux expression riper bigger dense tannins long and layered finish there is a lot of clove a little of, lot of cocoa a bit of coffee so despite the virtual absence of oak influence in there you can find some trademark signatures from the cabernets a bit of the cold wood ashes in there and a bit of the clovey spicy character so the spices do come from the oak aging in many cases but it does also naturally occur just from the grapes itself and that's one of the wonders of wine because there's so many aromas that virtually seem to come from so many different things and so many different foods but everything is packed in there even though you are virtually only using gra only grapes and nothing else even without oak you can still find some spices and some chocolate and some cocoa and a bit of licorice so this is a very very interesting interesting wine I made some fantastic Cabernet Francs when I was in Australia, when I was in Tuscany as well. 
this is a grape that I really love because you are getting the richness, the subtlety, the intensity, the tannic intensity of Cabernet Sauvignon, but with much more precise and refined fruity expression and the signature floral or violet expression that I was talking about before. So three fantastic examples of Cabernet Franc, pure expressions, long wines, lots of depth, fantastic fruit definition within these three wines. Uh, Paul is also, I will rate it also on a 92 out of 100 points. So I think Paul and Patience to me are on the same level but with slightly different expressions. Uh, Lentru is a great, great entry, you know, entry price for a fantastic Cabernet Franc. I mean, wow, I mean, I would, you know, you could virtually consider drinking this on a regular basis because it's so affordable. But this is such a great wine, it's salivating, it's juicy, it's so fruity. Uh, three, four fantastic expressions, I love the Candide. And those wines completely go in the new and more modern trends of wines that are respectful of the environment, that are respectful of the taste that comes from the grapes rather than adding stuff into the wines. Low sulfites, I mean they have a lot for themselves and I can confirm tasting them that these three uh, wines are fantastic, fantastic expressions. And uh, that's gonna be me for today. I've probably already spent much too long talking about these wines, but uh, you know, I love to share the passion and I love to give those wines, well, the time they deserve to describe them, to talk about them, to taste them thoroughly. Yeah, some mm, the herbal sense in there, some rosemary and thyme coming through as well together with the sour cherry and the fresh zingy raspberries this is just just smelling it is just a delight and the fresh licorice you know like the licorice root expression in there is absolutely absolutely delightful yeah some fascinating fascinating wine i think i'm gonna have take a little bit more time after i finish this video to enjoy them further because they are definitely worth it i hope you enjoyed today's video if you've got any questions let me know in the comments i'd be happy to answer anything that you'd want to know about these wines or the cabernet franc or the chenin blanc and i hope you enjoyed today's video and i will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine cheers Santé. Salut.